Well, some of you have been waiting for this video for a very, very, very long time. Well, let's get started. Computers, gaming, retro gear, devices, tech reviews, and more. Kicking off with Finally, I think I have every part needed to build my PF Sense firewall for my server rack in the living room. What we got here is a 250 watt power supply. We've got an Atom D25 motherboard. Neat. I don't like the way they shipped it. It didn't come in a box, it came in this. Makes me nervous. An A Data 32 gigabyte SSD. That should be more than enough for this firewall. I just need, need it to run the OS. That's all I really need it to do, so this should be efficient. We have two sticks of Samsung 2 gigabyte PC 8500 DDR3 memory running at 1066 megahertz. So it'll give us four gigs for this little baby. It's probably a overkill for a firewall, but I just wanted to be going to make sure some screws. First things first, we need to unbox this bad boy. See what we got underneath. Okay, it looks like we got some screws here. Okay, here it is. Let's go ahead and unplastic her. Very simple design here. Here is the front of it. We've got a power um, LED lights for power, HDD, on and off, a reset switch, and two USB ports. Looks like I've got it upside down. And this is the back. Not much in there. So let's go ahead and see what's inside. Ah, there we go. It's like they put all this separately here. I think it's time to unbox a motherboard so we can put something in it, right? Okay, here's our motherboard. Let's go ahead and open her up. This is kind of neat. It comes with a convenient little sticker that explains everything on the board for you. For all your pins. Nice. CD for drivers, which probably isn't going to work in the operating system we're using it for. Here's all of our ports. We got audio, two ethernets, four USBs here, uh, VGA, DVI, and classic PS2 parts on the board here. We got one expansion slot, CMOS battery. Here's where our RAM's gonna go. And the CPU has got a heat sink on it right there. And looks like we've got two SATA slots to work with. Nice. Let's go ahead and get started with our memory. There we go, the memory is unboxed. Let's go ahead and get it installed. Well, that was easy as click snap it in. Let's go ahead and bring this back and install our IO shield. Well, we do have a slight problem. The IO shield is a little bit bigger. I might have to do a little modification here. Okay, looks like we're back in action. I got the uh, IO port a little trimmed on the top here, so now it fits in there just perfectly. Let's go ahead and screw down that motherboard. There we go, the motherboard is now installed. Let's go ahead and unbox our power supply. I'm hoping I got the right one. I hope so. Okay, it's got a power cord in there. Oh wow, look at that, that is one teeny power supply. There we go, fits like a glove. Now I just need to screw her in, only two screws right here. Power supply is now installed. Let's go ahead and unbox this SSD, shall we? Well, I'm looking at what I got here, and it looks like I may not actually need this. As you can see here, there's this little tray in here. It looks like the hard drive screw from the bottom to it, so take this out. Yep, came right out of there, and I bet you, what do you know? Look at that. The screw holes line up perfectly, so technically you gotta have two SSDs in this thing. So who knows, maybe in the future, throw like a terabyte uh, SSD in there and use it for like a file server or something? I don't know. Something I could think about for the future. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and screw the SSD onto here now. Now, a problem I'm looking into just before screwing this down is how this, how the cables are gonna get to it. If I put it here, it's gonna be in the way <clears throat> of the motherboard. If I flip it around, I may be able to do it, but I need to check my power leads first. I mean, that is stretching it, but see, going here, you know, I think I'm gonna go this way. 
got the first screw done, let's go ahead and get the rest of them in. Got our screwed in there, we're going to go ahead and now mount it back into the case. And there it is, our SSD is now installed. Now comes the fun part of wiring everything up. Got everything connected now. I think I'm about ready to, at least to see if it's gonna fire on up and turn on. Well, we have an LED light on. Is the power supply fan on? Oop, it beeped. That is a good sign. It posted. Now, what I need to do is tighten up on my wiring here, come up with some type of plan here, and I'll take a shot of that. We can put her in the rack and See what happens. The wires are as bundled up as I think I'm gonna be able to get them. Let's go ahead and shut her. She is all buttoned up and ready to be rack mounted. Okay, there she is just before it goes into the rack. I decided to put that sticker that came with it on here, just in case I ever need it for reference. And you know, it just, it just looks cool. So I'm gonna leave that on there. Now for the fun part. I've gotta pull this out, dust and clean everything inside, and get it in the rack mount, and figure out how I'm gonna wire it up because the modem's way over there and has a short cable, so I've gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here. So as soon as I figure out what I'm gonna do here, then we will move on from there. Now, there it is. It's in the rack now. Got my PF Sense USB stick here, plug in the keyboard temporarily in through the front. Everything is all good in the back. You can even still read the stickers, which is really neat. All right, here we go. Hitting the power button. Oh, we're lit up. Hit delete after the beep. Nice, we are in the BIOS. Uh, got the Intel Atom, 1.8.6 gigahertz. Uh, looks like it's detecting the processor okay. It's detecting the RAM speed okay. Detecting both sticks of memory. So we got four gigs in total. Uh, system date is actually right. Um, configurations, I want to make sure the boot order is set. By default, everything's ready to go. There isn't much I have to change in here. I like that. Okay, let's go ahead and reboot the system now and see if she boots from the USB. And there we go, we're at the menu. I'm just gonna go ahead with option one here. I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, and uh, say yes to these default settings. We're gonna do quick and easy install. Uh, it says it'll automatically install everything. So now it's installing the system. Not sure how long this process takes. We're just gonna go ahead and go with the standard kernel. Even though this runs uh, BSD, I'm noticing a lot of Linux file systems being copied over here. So they're very familiar, it looks like. Well, that wasn't too bad, just a couple of minutes. So let's go ahead and hit the reboot. The moment of truth, first boot. I'm just gonna let it do its own thing here. Okay, looks like now we get to enter an option here. Okay, I went to that IP address into my uh, Firefox here. It says your connection is not secure. So I guess I'm just going to have to click advance. Add an exception. So I'm going to go ahead and enter the default username and password. Now if I remember correctly, the password is admin and it is just pfsense. Looks like this version is a lot different from the tutorials on YouTube that I was watching. Looks like here this wizard's gonna guide me through the initial configuration and this wizard may be stopped at any point by clicking the logo image in the top of the screen. Okay. Okay, we get to choose a host name for it. Hey, Antware, of course, why not? We're gonna leave that local domain. I'm sure I can change this later, but that's interesting. I wonder how that works. Okay, I think I've seen this before. This is where we enter the 8.8.8.8, I think. We're gonna about to find out. I think this is where we enter a time zone. I don't get this step at all. I guess I'm going to leave it on that. 
Static IP. Doesn't look like I really need to set up any of this stuff. At least not right now, at the moment. As again, I'm just going to leave default. Now it's going to let me set an official password. And now it wants me to click reload. It says, congratulations, my PFSense is now configured. Mm. Yeah, it says, please uh, contribute back. So if I really, really like this, I will throw them a few bucks from my YouTube money. Sure, why not? And I have internet access. Sweet. Um, now the next mission is to figure out how to get Wi-Fi running on here with my old uh, old Wi-Fi router. I think it should be pretty uh, pretty easy, I hope. I'm guessing all I gotta do is connect the router over. Let's find out how hard this is gonna be now. I think with the stats of this uh, system that I built, looks like, uh, yeah, I'm barely touching the memory, disk usage is doing good. I've got a lot of room to play here. Okay, since the uh, TV PC is connected through the router and not the switch, unlike my main PC, what I'm gonna try here is just disable the DHCP uh, server on here. So we'll go ahead and restart it and we'll see what happens. Oh boy, I don't know if this is a good sign or not. <laughs> oh boy. But it's doing something. I don't know if I'll be able to access the router anymore. I hope I can, because I still need to get in here for the wireless settings. Okay, so I do have internet. So as of right now, kind of locked out of the router settings. Um, it's working just like it did before. Um, I had the crossover cable go onto this switch from the old router. And so after disabling the service on here, yeah, it makes sense. It's doing the same thing, but opposite this time now. Okay, so the router must have a new, I'm guessing it has a new IP address, I bet you. So let me figure out this predicament. You know what, just for the heck of it, just with the way things are now. Okay, so Wi-Fi configuration is, is working. Well, I learned something today. Yeah, I did. Um, I missed a step here because I just disabled it. <laughs> um, this time I learned I missed a step where I had to go to LAN and change this one, this number here, to a 1, and I couldn't get it to work. So what I did is I unplugged it from everything, hoping that maybe it would work. So I had to go into my, and I couldn't log into the router at all anymore. So in order to do it, I actually had to go to my uh, network connections here. And I believe it was this one I edited. And under IPv4 settings, I had to manually set it for manual, uh, give it a manual IP address, put in the subnet masks in the gateway, got that set up, hit save, it was able to connect to the network, was able to log into the router, changed it, change it to the I said it exactly the same as this one, but this one instead of a two was a one. Hooray, I'm back into my wireless settings. Nice. So it looks like now everything's working, everything's connecting, the Wi Fi is working, everything's up and running, and I have a lot of cool things to play with here. I can't wait to mess with. And there's, it's just so detailed. I'm going to have so much fun playing with this and setting it up and putting in some packages in the package manager here. This is, this is awesome. I, I'm very, 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 very happy with this so far. This power supply is a steaming pile of that. Well, this is just great. After a week, the power supply in the new PFSense box died. Didn't last very long. It cooked itself. So, per Mr. Macro, we've got a, a Seasonic power supply to replace it. Hopefully it'll last longer. This one just, yeah, Chinese piece of crap. And so he, he re recommended this one. He says if this one um, fries, he'll buy me another one. So, yeah. As you can see, the fan is bigger on the new one. So hopefully it should be able to push air because when you think about it, you put your vent holes up here and it's in a 1U rack, it's just gonna get blocked anyway, so what's the point? This one's got a little air hole there on the top, but a lot more in the back, so hopefully this one will last. I guess we'll find out in the future, in a future video. Yeah, you're going in the trash can. Everything's up and running in here. Um, little thing, the thing is that blue LED is a little bright. 
Still have yet to clean this window and I want to stick some stickers on here that I got from Mark Ryder for Christmas. But I have a Raspberry Pi 2 here and there's still one section of this rack that needs to be finished. And that's this top row. Um, one of them still kind of in testing here. That was the own cloud server that I did before is in there. Over here is where this pie is going to go into. I'm going to change the cases. I got two of these here. Yeah, I got two of these. Trust me, it's back there. I got two of these, and so the Raspberry Pi 2s will be the same up at the top, which will be really nice. And the other one's going to be a Raspberry Pi 2 uh, voice chat server for Mumble, so I don't have to pay for it anymore. Um, and then in the middle here is where I'm going to put my extra, because I have two Pine 64s, and I'm going to put one of them up in here so I can have an X to go server. Yeah. So stay tuned, and we'll continue the story and the legend of this server rack as it finishes its last shelf of three more devices, leaving me only with two plugs down here left. Um, I'm leaving one open because that's my one I use for when I work on people's computers, so I'm going to leave that port free. So with that, guys, I am ending this video here. I love my new PF Sense. It's, it's going to be so much fun to toy with. So this has been Anthony from Mathware, and from this time and every time on, folks, keep on clicking. This is Anthony from Mathware, signing off.